Ige and Doug here from X-Frames FPV, and today we've got a Final Thoughts wrap-up video on the 205 Neato breakneck frame. Now, we did a previous video, which was our build-out, and kind of went over the components. Some of them have changed, and we'll go over that in this video, and so let's get right into it. Now, you know, we talked about with these frames that they are um, a little more involved as far as the build goes because everything is housed in between um, these two side skirts. And it just makes for a little bit, um, a little more involved, you know, when you're buttoning everything up, you've got to um, make sure everything's tucked in there really good. The camera fit is a little bit different because... Um, you have to use a mount. There's no side mounts like on some of the frames. And so, um, none of this stuff is, is anything that makes it really hard. It just is more time consuming. And, um, some of the things on this frame, um, took a little extra time just in thought. Um, first of all, so you see here, we only have one standoff in the rear and normally you have two. And I would normally mount my VTX on the top run the antenna through the two, this antenna through the two standoffs and kind of have it sticking out a little bit in the back here and zip tie it to the top plate. And that didn't work here because obviously we can't run it straight. Um, I thought about running it at a cur curve here, but then the side skirt got in the way. So we went ahead and stuck with the design that how Nito has it, which is mounting on the top plate. Now, I will say, you know, a lot of times these top plates can be fragile and in a break, um, in a crash, you can actually crack these quite easily. That's not been the case with the Neato frames that um, I've built, nor the one that I have and I fly. And so, um, especially this one, I expect this one to probably be pretty strong because um, you have this standoff, which is, a, you know, a secure... Um, a strengthening point right here, right by where it mounts. So I don't, it's not a huge deal. It's just something you have to think about, right? It's not that, that, um, I wasn't able to, you know, change direction and put it on here, but you know, I took a little time trying to see if I can fit it this way and it didn't work. So all those things do take more time. So I just like to let people know about that as they're going to build something. Now, in my previous video, I also talked about how this came to me basically built and the customer wanted me to tear it all down and redo it and change some things. So um, the ESCs were already on the arms and the wires going to the motors were already cut to that length. So we kept it that way. And that's, you know, it's six of one, half dozen the other. You know, there's advantages to having it out here, which is um, better cooling for the ESCs if you're if you are kind of pushing the limit of an ESC, maybe with a 5S or something like that, you have better cooling. Um, and, you know, if you have them inside, they look better. So I, I think for an all-out racer that you're going to be, you know, kind of pushing hard, I kind of like um, this way myself. But, um, you know, the other, I know a lot of people that run them inside and race and they don't have any problems. So, uh, but let's take a look at how I did the antenna. That's another thing we're talking about now, the the receiver for the antenna receiver for the, this has a spectrum system. Normally I would run that off of the two standoffs in the back and run it up and back. Okay. Didn't work here. Obviously we can't do that. You could do running one this way and that way. And, um, but I wasn't crazy about having number one. I don't like the looks of that. I know it's a good system, but I don't like the looks of it, but here's what I chose to do. And it, it, this is going to work really well. Um, you know, diversity antennas, if you can, the further apart from each other that you can get them, you know, you can, that can really help. And, um, this is not standard, uh, shrink tube. This is actually three in one. So standard shrink tubes, shrinks by half and this shrinks by two thirds and what it ends up with let me see if you can hear this you end up with a pretty hard almost as hard as a regular antenna tube once it drop once it tries once it cools down and so I just bent these into shape and let them cool down and it it's it's I mean they're they're really I mean even if you bounce them around they just come right back to where they were so um, I think this should work out really well. 
Now, some of the changes that we did, you know, in the beginning, you know, this has the Furious FPV Combini flight controller. And we talked about uh, one of my concerns in the beginning was how close everything is. And you can reference the first video of how tight all the ESC power um, leads and the ESC signal leads are right in there together. And, um, you know, it is it is definitely not a board for somebody who is, um, you know, just kind of learning how to solder because it, it does take a little bit of time. I will tell you um, the best way, in my opinion, to do it is to start with the small wire, so the signal leads from the ESCs first and then go to the bigger um, power leads and, and then even wait till after you get done with that before you put the XT60 connector on there. So um, it just makes it a little bit easier. You know, it wasn't the end of the world, but it, it just was something that, you know, did take extra time and um, was uh, a little bit of a pain, to be honest with you. I think if, you know, if I was going to buy for me, if I was going to buy a PDB and, e and flight controller all in one, I would definitely go with the Impulse RC because I think it's a better layout. Um, maybe this com combini does things that the impulse RC doesn't, I don't know, but, um, I'm sure, sure was happy with the impulse RC one that I built, put in the helix. So, um, but we, one of the things that we had with, with the furious FPV combini is the furious FPV piggy. And that is a, um, OSD that can mount on the back of the camera. Now I had installed that. Um, it requires uh, software, which is MWOSD software, to program. You know, um, I don't like doing that. I know that there's so many things that you can do with that software. Um, but I think as for a racer, you know, a racer just pretty much wants, you know, the battery information. That's really all they're looking for. And so... Um, I don't see the need for all of that, and it definitely make makes it a little bit of a pain. Now, you can use, there is a way to where you can use it and do pass-through, uh, through beta flight, or, and um, so that makes it a little bit easier. You don't have to um, use a special plug or, you know, to, to access it, but every time you want to change it, you got to go in there. It's a little bit difficult, so I, I'm not crazy about that. A lot of people love it, so... Um, you know, for them, it works for me. It's, it's not my favorite. I would choose to do something more like, um, the arrow camera, which is actually <laughs> speaking of, which is what ended up in here. And the reason is, is because the picky was faulty. Um, we had a problem. I got it all hooked up and everything programmed and we can never get video through from the camera. So, um, we ditched that system and we went with the arrow camera, which has built in OSD. It's as easy to plug in as, um, a regular camera. You just add one little wire that goes to your LiPo power, you know, whether you, you, you hook it to a power lead of your ESC or your, or your XT60, it doesn't matter. Super simple. So we went with that really easy to program and it gives you all the information you need. So, um, that's really the only, oh, the only, the other thing that we did change is we went from the lemon RX to the, I think it's the SP 4648, I believe is the number. This is the quad racer receiver from spectrum and it's just a better receiver. Um, it, you don't get as many brownouts or signal losses or, or, um, that kind of thing. So I, I just, I talked to my customer. I said, you know, I would, I would suggest putting these in and that's what we did. So other than that, everything pretty much stayed the same. Um, I flew this yesterday and it flies absolutely wonderful. And it's really just, you know, you, you have to agree. It's just, it's just a beautiful, beautiful drone. And so I think he's going to have a lot of fun with it. Um, this is heading off to Hawaii today. And I think um, my customer will be very happy, and hopefully it'll be a um, as lethal as it is beautiful, right? So, again, guys, I appreciate you so much. Appreciate all my subscribers and all the comments that I get on on 
um, the channel. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section. And you can check out my website at xframesfpv.com. That's xframesfpv.com. And that's where you can kind of check out pricing and some different things. I'm going to be doing some videos here coming up. I'm going to be redoing a lot of motor videos. Um, I've got a new thrust stand that that is more accurate. So I'm going to be redoing that. That takes a little more setup. So it's going to be a while before I actually have those up and running. And then I'm also going to be doing, um, you know, as we get closer to Christmas, we have... Um, people that have never flown and they want to get into something inexpensive. So I'm going to be doing a review of quite a few of the little, um, you know, 100 size or even 80 size, 80 millimeter size FPV drones, because those are really great way to get into this hobby. So again, thanks guys. And I hope you have some time to fly.